I always thought that electric guitars oh, was something that is just like small in my brain. Until I heard Remy Soul playing Yerushalayim Shel Zahat. Let me sit down. Maybe right for sure. And I understood the, the power of how Rebbe Soul deals with, with the vibration of each string. So you're in for a treat. Thank you, thank you. Well, let's acknowledge uh, that we, uh, we the bathroom is around the corner from the kitchen. If you go to the kitchen, you make a left and a minute left to the bathroom. I want to acknowledge that there's filming going on. We have. Yes. I have a question. Is there a way to change the lights because we can't see sure. it? You're all in shadow, so we can't see uh, you. Turn off the lights. This may be Can we bounce it against? Yes. Is it okay if we bounce it against the wall? Sure, sure. You, you deal with it. Do you need it for uh, I don't need it, right? Okay. So, oh, so okay, let's turn it off. Here. Okay. Okay. Let's twist around like that. Yeah, so gotta go further. Go further. How's that? Does it work for you, Dina? Well, there you are. It's going to get darker in a little bit. It's much better. Does that look good for everybody? Yeah, for you? There you are. It's okay? Yeah, that's more better. I'm going to see if I can do this. I was going to pull this floor a little bit. Uh, I want to acknowledge that there's filming going on here that for two separate projects. One is to just record Rebbe Soul. Yes? Yes. And there's another film going on, there's a documentary going on uh, about the, what's going on in this life, the life of this community, the Love Hub community. So if there's no... Uh, release form from you, you will not be in any kind of a final project, but if you open, if you wish to be uh, seen, uh, we'll have a release form from you, this, you know, after the, after the concert. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody has a question or concern? Where is he from? Tell us a little bit of his bio. <laughs> You said that. She did. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm actually just. No, I mean Rabbi <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's very good. He will tell us. Okay. And and, and one more thing about it. if you call the jackets for women and men around the corner and any money that is we raised, you, you could either use the jackets for the evening. But if you want to take it home, if you find like the tuxedos, the leather jackets, if you've seen anything that you want and you want to uh, buy it, uh, uh, all the money will go for Nepal, to raise money for Nepal. And I was hoping to also help Rabbi Sola to, to help him buy, um, to replace his stolen guitar. So it's very, very sad that his guitar got stolen. Wow. Okay. So, uh, string those guys up. I don't know. Very good. And you know, if nobody will sit there, let's take the pillows from there because people I'm can use it. You're sitting there. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm okay. wondering where I even need this microphone. Oh, uh, yeah, you should fix TV. Yeah, there's. Do we need that? And Mr. Off? Cameraman, I'm sure you have a fascinating story too. Yeah. Don't oh. want you to feel dismissed. <laughs> it's okay. You exist. I used to be a professor, so I'm used to that. <laughs> You exist even you're behind the camera hiding there. Okay. Rabbi Sol, do you want to say anything about you? Do you want to weave your history and your background into your stories or do you want to give background right now? Because somebody's well, asking. Oh. Well, I was born on a very hot day in July. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Do you have questions? Is there something specific? Because I'll be happy to. People often ask me questions about some of the instruments. I only have a few because when you fly, these days it's increasingly yeah. difficult to take a lot of instruments with you. So uh, I'm very pared down right now. But, uh, you know, like uh, like in Israel, people, <laughs> uh, you're probably not, not going to feel comfortable with this, but you can if you like. They'll just, in the middle of something, just ask a question. Like, what is that thing? Or, you know, something like that. And uh, I encourage you to maybe do it between songs. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, seriously, we can. I mean, this is a nice, intimate thing, and this is what's nice about about house concerts, and in particular uh, about arenas, because it's kind of like it's a it's a little scene here. You know what I mean? It's, it's cool. It's not just you know some formal thing. A lot of people know each other. I know some of you, and um, so you can you know talk about stuff if you like. If there's any story to put in context before you sing, like if you want to share about or later. how you make or a later. Speech. Yeah, or any, later. Any, any, any time. Yeah. Any time. Or both. Or not. <laughs> Stomp the rubbish. Well, the first thing, 
The first thing is I have kind of a philosophy about playing. And my philosophy is to do your best to play in tune. So that's what I'm going to start doing right now. Um, <laughs> um, this is, uh, this is a, a balalaika, by the way. Some of you know that, some of you don't. But it's... Uh, balalaikas are traditionally uh, like Russian, really. And um, contrary to what some people might think, it's not some ancient instrument at all. This uh, balalaikas probably haven't even been around for 250 years. Um, there was a, a czar, a Russian czar, who uh, who wanted a, a like a Russian instrument, you know. So he probably said, you know, I want the Russian instrument, <laughs> something like that. And this guy, you know, showed up and said, well, you know, I got this thing. Uh, what's it called? Well, it's called a balalaika, and here here's one of them right here. And you can see they're kind of triangular shaped. And uh, as I'm tuning, I'm trying <laughs> trying to make this cool here. Yeah, that is one of the things, the weather really affects these. Um, so balalaikas, as I said, are traditionally Russian. This is actually not Russian. If you were to see <laughs> right here in very small letters, which you can, it's too far away, and I can hardly even see it now, not because I need glasses, but because my arm is no longer long enough. <laughs> um, but it actually says made in GDR. And some of you probably know where GDR at least was, and we usually call it East Germany. So this is actually from East Germany, this particular um, balalaika. And a lot of times when I when I uh, when I introduce people to what balalaikas are, I'll mention the movie Doctor Zhivago. I don't know how many of you have seen. Have you seen Doctor Zhivago? It's an old classic, right? Omar Sharif. And there's a there's a balalaika that's in the movie, almost like a character. And it goes through the movie. And then at the very end, uh, they switch balalaikas. There's a the scene at the very end, there's a girl there, who's got the balalaika kind of slung around her back, and the, uh, I think it's at, uh, at the border or something. Hey, can you play that thing? And her boyfriend says, can she play? Why, she's an artist. And she turns around and you can see this pattern. Wow. And it looks like it comes from the same place. I think it's probably from the same factory. And so, so this is that kind of balalaika. And um, this, was, uh, this was given to me um, as a, a very special gift by, by somebody, his name is Tommy Tedesco. Now, oh, some of you do know. <clears throat> okay, so for those of you, I, people in music sometimes know who Tommy Tedesco was. He died about, I don't know, 15 years ago. But he was probably one of the most recorded musicians ever. Uh, he was in a, a group of studio players here in L.A. That's why some people know here. Anywhere else I would never get any recognition of that name. Um, but they were called, they called themselves the Wrecking Crew. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you know the Wrecking Crew. Yeah, Hal Blaine, Tommy Tedesco on guitar, and a, and a bunch of other people. They, they had, you know, different Glenn people. Campbell. They played, Glenn Campbell was even part of it, that's right. Leon Russell. <laughs> Leon Russell, yeah, sometimes. It's amazing, and by the way, I think one of the reasons why Joe Cocker sounds so great, and while some of those Clapton tunes like uh, Let It Rain and... Uh, songs off of that, that period from Clapton sound so great is uh, as much as I love Eric Clapton it's not so much Clapton but Leon Russell was the arranger and man that guy just smoked the arrangements so Joe Cocker stuff sounded great um, Clapton and other people so anyway Tommy uh, Tommy Tedeschi he gave me this ball like uh, and uh, I mentioned the movie Dr. Zhivago he actually played um, uh, 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 oh, oh, oh. Played a cat. <laughs> Clever, clever little thing. Kids and animals. <laughs> Make sure they sit in the front row. <laughs> right. oh, There's now a, a film about the wrecking crew that has been completed in this magnificent. Right, it's um, Denny Tedesco, who is Tommy's son, who, um, well, actually, I got to know pretty well. Uh, made this movie uh, mainly for his father, but of course it included all the other guys, and it's a it's a great movie, you know. Especially those of you like here, because these are all like the the local LA players at the time, starting with the '60s. Uh, you know, when you listen to uh, you know on TV, down to down to down to down to down down to down. I mean, that's Tommy Tedesco playing guitar. You know, when you, when you listen to like the Beach Boys or you know the 
I don't know. Three Dog Night. Oh, yeah, right, probably. What did he do? Oh, yeah. Really? I didn't and know the that. Monkeys. The Monkeys. The Monkeys. Ah, Monkeys for sure. Huh? Right. And Michael Nesbitt after band? that. Um, no, but they played in all this stuff. Anyway, I'm talking to you. So, any other questions? <laughs> Later. <laughs> yeah, I got to look at my set list, which is conveniently lit up over there. But you were a studio musician, which is why you know this. Yeah, I played. I, I played a. Wow, that's a pretty treble. Let me go. Is that? Um, I can't over here. It sounds a little trebly. Is that like really harsh to your ears? It's, I like it. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Trouble so fans. It like it okay, treble. Okay, I'm kind of a bass fan myself. Yeah. I'm a bass you know, lady. But. Uh, yeah. So this, this is a song of welcome. We sing it usually on Friday nights, the beginning of Shabbat. And it goes like this. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaShaved, Malachi Elyon, Mimelech, Malachi HaMalachi, Makadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaShaved, Malachi Elyon, Mimelech, Malachi HaMalachi, Makadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaShaved, Malachi So Shalom Aleichem is in four parts, that's the first part, where you're actually just saying Shalom, kind of like saying hello to the Angel of Peace, and that's on Friday night. And the second part, you're actually welcoming the Angel of Peace into your door, and it goes like this. Baruch and Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elyon, Mimelech, Malachi Hamalachi, Makados, Malachi Elyon, Baruch and Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi Elyon, Mimelech, Malachi Hamalachi, Makados, Malachi Elyon, Baruch and Shalom, Malachi Shalom, Malachi The third part, you're asking the angel of peace to bless you with peace. So it goes bakunim like this. Okay, last part. You ask the angel of peace now to, to leave, to depart in peace. And some people actually don't do this on the Shabbat because they like to say, you know, keep the angel there. But my feeling is, you know, there's plenty to go around kind of thing, you know, lots of good stuff. So let the angel go. You already got blessed and everything. And let it go on to another another home, another soul, another person. And it goes, safe time. Bye.
I think there's one Ladino speaker here at least. Anyone else speak Ladino by any chance? Okay, Paquito. All right. Well, I actually don't, but this is a Ladino song, so I hope you just have mercy on me. Uh, this song it probably has like 15,000 verses. There's a lot of these old songs. This probably goes back easily a few hundred years. And uh, Usually those kinds of songs have many, many verses, and I basically can get through one. Uh, so, uh, I just try to kind of play cool stuff with it. The first time I ever did this, there was, there was a Ladino speaker in the audience. I just learned the song. And, uh, <clears throat> and as I said, I only met, you know, was able to even pull off one verse anyway. And so, uh, after the show, uh, this was a big concert. There were like a couple of thousand people. I think it was in Vancouver. And uh, after the show, someone came backstage and told me... Uh, I basically corrected all my uh, mistakes, you know what I mean? So I hope I'm a little bit better now. Thank you. 
Guitar students, I told them that until you say Ole, you can't play that song. I just realized I didn't say Ole, so Ole. Ole. Hey, would you like to ask the words of what you just said? Somebody oh, I'd be happy us. to tell you tell the one. words if I only could. Um, I remember I told you I don't know, but there well there are two people that are probably here that know. Oh, this guy is. Okay. Ah, so both, okay. The Dino is a little different, but most of it's Spanish. So please. Uh, Oh my tell, God. tell them, tell me. <laughs> okay, okay. When you don't know, she'll fill uh, in. I'm you sure. want me to? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, what do you want me to tell? Okay, basically, okay, tell me. Uh, that is the, the king, Nimrod, uh, go to the um, farm area, to the land, mm -hmm. and he looked to the sky, and, uh, and then um, he saw a white light, and, and he saw. Uh, that was like a sign for the Jew area that uh, is a group, look like it's an area that the Jew used to live together, like in a ghetto together in the old... Right, later called it a ghetto. Yeah, the Jew area, it was a group of <coughs> Jews that lives in, in Spain <laughs> together because they were merchandise <coughs> and in some, in some part, you know, and uh, historically. And then later what happened, then uh, he was like the light and then feel inspired and was Abraham Avinu, like he was like, they saw the light and inspirational, like hope. You know, more that is the meaning. And then is they say, Abraham, you know, God, Father Abraham. God, God, Abraham. Father uh, Abraham. Father uh, querido, Abraham you know, Abraham means Abraham um, Abraham beloved. Love, beloved. <laughs> uh, light, light from Israel. The, right. the that, is Israel a, Israel. that is a basic meaning. Thank you. 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 Oh, thanks a lot. You're welcome. <coughs> <coughs> so let's see, this is, um, this is, this is actually one of my favorite tunes. This, uh, comes right out of the Torah. This is, uh, uh, what Yaakov said to his, uh, grandsons when he was, uh, basically on his deathbed. He had his grandsons there, so he, he blessed his grandsons with this. <coughs> and, um, Unlike most prayers in Judaism, this is actually not addressed to God. It's addressed to an angel. It's called usually called Hamalach. That's the way it starts off. Hamalach, Hamalach Agoyim, and uh, Hamalach means the angel. And so this is actually said to an angel. Now uh, nowadays there are a lot of people that uh, that use that that use this prayer, this this blessing, these words, and they recite it to their children when they're going to sleep at night. <clears throat> as a way, <clears throat> excuse me, as a way of blessing them, which is, I think, a really, really nice thing to do. Maybe some of them sing it. And uh, anyway, the version that I know goes like this. And I recorded this one on my uh, on my Rebbe solo album. <laughs> that was a play, actually, that was written uh, about how I got started with all this. And it was actually it was a great play, and I can say that because I didn't write it. 
It was written by a playwright, and I think he did a great job. And uh, as, uh, as with a lot of this stuff, by the way, it's available here tonight. I think it's over here. Um, there are like download cards and CDs and stuff, whatever you like. So you can, you know, get like five or ten of them and take them home and give them out as presents and stuff like that. When you think about it again, buy another five or ten. Uh, or more. Okay. <laughs> People here from uh, the Bnei Chorin community. Am I right about that? A couple. No, Just a few. Okay. So this is this is like this song is kind of like a hit in that community, I think, um, because uh, they do it a lot in their services, and it's a really nice song. And as soon as I tune up, I'm going to play it for you. <laughs> situations uh, when I have a, a guitar that I plug in like this, if I turn off the volume I can tune up and it doesn't bother anybody, no one really hears. And I, in this intimate space you can probably hear everything. balance and everything. Can you hear like enough guitar, enough voice? It's it nice and balanced. Yeah. Not too loud. It's okay. It's comfortable for you all? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what was the song again? Oh yeah. <coughs> Ooh, 
בשלום על העם, הישראל הלוחה, תשים לעולם. בשלום על העם, הישראל הלוחה, תשים לעולם. Here on my left is my good friend Mark, who supplies the, the, supply the little sound system here too, and I thank him very much. He's also uh, the Chazan of B'nai Chorin, and I just realized you know this song, Cold. You want to join me with it? You, you don't even have to move, you can stay right there if you like. It was, the melody was written by my AZA brother, manager Jeff Clever. Oh yeah, Jeff Clever, right. <clears throat> it was a little picture, a little younger than me. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> right. So, okay, you want to do a verse or something? No, 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 just sing along. Okay. Shalom soul album I did. It's called From Another World. And uh, uh, I was asked actually to do this. I was asked to do a, a music, uh, an album of the music of uh, Shlomo, Kalibach, uh, Shlomo Kalibach. And so I did this uh, with a little bit of a diff different twist. It's all completely instrumental. Um, I wanted it to be like a little bit of a different, different take on it. <laughs> and um, I remember I was wondering what I was going to call this album. I recorded all the tunes. I did it all in Israel, it, it sounded you know, really nice, I was real happy with it, and I realized, wow, I still don't have a title for this thing, you know? And, um, and I was talking to a, a good friend of mine, and he was just asking me about any kind of connection that I had with, uh, with Reb Shlomo, as many people refer to him as a, one of the sweetest people and an amazing teacher, frankly, uh, amazing teacher, amazing storyteller. <coughs> 
And, uh, and I said, well, I, the last time I saw him, I, play, I played this thing in Los Angeles. I don't know if you remember, it was, uh, I forgot the exact year, early 90s, like 90, 91 or something. There was a huge earthquake here. 94. 94 was it? 94 was it? Wow, that late. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so 1994. And so the Jewish community here, uh, the Orthodox Jewish community, mainly centered in Pico Robertson, decided to do like a little benefit and to try to raise money and the, to give it to some kind of, you know, these earthquake uh, relief organizations. And so I just come out with my first Rebbe Soul album, and I was, I was at that time, and because of that, I was getting invited to like Shabbat dinners all over the place and everything like that. And uh, of course, they asked me to go and, and play for this thing, so I did. And, uh, and I remember uh, I invited a couple of my bandmates, and we got up there, and we just, you know, we just kind of threw down a bunch of a bunch of tunes and uh, it was it was really really cool um, and uh, at the very end uh, I played a song that I'll play a little bit later because I play it all the time and it's usually a real like dramatic kind of thing especially when I play with a band and uh, afterwards I got off the stage and uh, someone's motioning me way in the back I can see like somebody doing this and I look and it's a good friend of mine he said come on over here I want to I want you to introduce you to somebody and he was sitting next to Shlomo Karlebach, who it turns out also played at this thing a little bit later. And so, uh, uh, so Reb, I walked over and he, he stood up, Reb Shlomo stood up and he, he like kind of grabbed me, you know, like real firmly by my arms like this and looked at me with this intense look. Like, I, I mean, I'd met him a couple of times before, but I, I never really had this kind of contact with him. And he looks at me like this, you know, his eyes were like this. And he goes, Gewalt! I later learned it's his favorite word. Yeah. Gewalt! It was from another world. And so I, and my friend said, well, man, you just told me that story. He gave you the title for the album. Yeah. It's from another world. And so that's why it's called From Another World. <laughs> so, so I'd love to give you a little taste of that. Um, and this, as I said, it's all instrumental. And uh, I, uh, I, I very seldom use like playback tracks for very much. I do it sometimes, and I'll probably do it just a couple of times tonight, especially since I'm playing solo. But this will give you a taste of the album also, and uh, and I'd love to to play like maybe the opening track on it. I have it on my computer here, so. Yeah, so this this song it's a if you know this what was that yes okay. no, it's not it's a MacBook Pro, and there's, there's no good joke you can make out of it. Um, so this is all, it goes like, You know the song? Can we hear it? Okay, you got it? Okay, so you sort of know the song. You sort of know it, but I'm not going to do it anyway, so forget it, okay? We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <Oops. laughs> that's, that's, gonna be, that's another album. I'll tell you about that another time. Okay. <laughs>
Seven years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seven. Who's counting? Did the music change in any way? Do I a change in, uh, in a change in what exactly? Did living in Israel shift what you are listening to, what you call? Oh, absolutely. Uh, no question. Um, okay, so you let me. That's that's an interesting question. Um, did Israel change like what I'm listening to musically, that kind of stuff? The question is absolutely, or the answer is absolutely. Um, one of the things uh, that I really love about Israel is uh, the, the talent, um, especially in, in like world music, is something that uh, I've never seen equaled anywhere else in one place. Um, you'll find like unbelievable uh, musicians and singers uh, of all different ethnicities, um, and everyone is sort of, sort of piled on top of each other in the country. Uh, I, just, I recently uh, produced an album that I'll, <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll turn you on to a little bit. I, I, uh, well, I produced a, uh, this wonderful Yemenite singer. Her name is Shlomit Levy. And she sings, uh, she sang with all the, like, the classic you know, artists like Boa Sharabi and all these other people. Uh, Etienne Cree and uh, she also sings in a heavy metal band, oriental metal band in Israel. Uh, it's a whole, you know... It's amazing, and she wanted to do an album uh, of her Yemenite um, background, and so uh, I ended up producing and then eventually collaborating with her on it. She's an amazing singer, um, and while you were walking in, uh, there was some music that was playing where you heard a female voice, and if that's what you heard, that was her. Um, and she's one of, just a perfect example of, of what this is. You find amazing, amazing talent um, in the country, so uh, it definitely affected you know, the way that I play and some of the stuff that I want to play. Um, when I was, I just played in New York with her uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, a couple of days later we were looking in one of the local papers in New York and we saw this band called the Libyans. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the band, the Libyans. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out we know these guys, <laughs> and some of them, like, we, we play with, and so they were playing in New York also, and it's a killer band. And so you find all kinds of bands like this. There's, um, let's see... Dudu Tassa, whose grandfather uh, uh, is from Iraq and was one of the top Iraqi singers in Iraq before they eventually were, well, thrown out, I guess, and they ended up in Israel. So he was able to take some of his grandfather's old vocals on some of these old recordings and then pile a bunch of other instruments and things on top of it and do a modern version of, of his songs. And it's an amazing album. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like kind of a charming idea and everything, but beyond that, it's an amazing album. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, so you find stuff like that in Israel, and I, I don't know any other place in the world that really equals it in this regard. So 
that's, uh, I guess, a long-winded answer to your question, but uh, the music there is, is really, uh, it's really pretty phenomenal. Um, well, this is actually a, this is actually a still out of tune is what it is. a kind of a traditional Israeli song. Um, I wasn't going to put this in right here, but since you asked that question and I answered it like this, I, this is an appropriate song to do now. So those of you that know, you know that what I was planning on playing, you can take out your number two pencils and, and uh, make a correction. Anyway, it kind of goes like this. background singers haven't shown up for the gig, you know, so feel free. Oh, <laughs> 
soul band we haven't played as a band like in a while and uh no, our drummer just walked in and i'm so delighted to see him that's paul right there so, and what a pleasure i uh, really we, we we keep texting each other on the phone sending emails and everything i haven't seen this guy's face in like a really long time so it's a pleasure to have you here and if you feel so inclined you're welcome to use this if you like no pressure but you're welcome to if you want now, paul's a killer drummer Saturday night, and so this is like a good time. I think it's dark out now and everything, so this is the cool time for Habdallah. And uh, let's see over there. I think I don't see it, but it's over there. There's the candle and all that stuff. So uh, what do we have here? Oh, you have the spices. So maybe uh, someone can uh, can take the spices. Anyone who would, would like to. Or should I just choose some? Sure. Okay, there you go. So, great. And then the candle. And the candle's here. The candle's very cool. So, would someone like to... to Somebody has a lighter? To hang the candle, yeah. Somebody has a lighter. Now, if this were Israel, there would be no problem finding a lighter, I can tell you that. <laughs> I'll go in your house. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, I mentioned the, the stuff I liked about Israel earlier. That's one thing I don't like, I gotta tell you. But, you know. This is a, a Kiddush cup I decorated with the kids in my group. And I just found it today. And it just happened to have, say Bnei Chorin on the bottom. But it's an Elijah's, Elijah's cup. A Kiddush cup, Elijah's cup. It's Elijah's cup. Elijah? Elijah. Anyone? Here. Is Elijah here? Your cup is here. Excuse me. Elijah, yes. So, I would like to give the light to... Uh, a woman who is looking for, a, looking for her beloved, who is ready to get married. Okay, Joyce, come. And you need to hold the the hold the the, hold the, the flame. So this is a special havdala candle. It is made out of many wicks. Wick, wicks. 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 <laughs> and you hold it as, as tall and you want to be loving this I think it, it, it actually it's working up like that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. 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 Usually it's clothes. Usually the half the lamp. the light as soft as you want your beloved to be, without burning the thing. Levitation of space. Just you know. Just you know. Just you know. Baruch atah Adonai Eloinu melech haolam Borei pri agape That's for the yai and the wine right there? The cup of joy Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei meneh besamim And everyone says Wow. 
tunes and Paul when we first did this live this is this is the first song that I ever played to playback tracks and the reason is because this song uh, uh, contains a series of Kaddish prayers uh, sung by people of all kinds of different types the Yemenites the Persians everybody else and when I put it all together I realized there was no way that I could I could copy like what they did because it was it was them singing in their own traditions and so it was the first time we ever did anything with actual backing tracks. And so, um, Paul actually played, played this when we did it live, and he came up with this killer drum beat, which you can't really do on this because it's got hi-hats and everything. But, <laughs> you know, but anyway, you'll do a killer thing over here. But I thought I would share it with you because, even though it's Kaddish, I just think it's a really cool song and it's a real reflection of, uh, of the Jewish people and also of Israel with the multicultural aspect of, of, of who, who we are. So uh, I'd like to kick it off with this. choir I decided to scrap the bass part because it was no longer necessary. You can see they harmonize with themselves. This is a choir from, from Russia. At the time it was actually the Soviet Union when these guys were first recorded. Next instrument is Kashishi. You hear like the little basket shaker. I don't have one with me. But it's from Brazil, a basket shaker that's used in the art of capoeira. And that was a little Kashishi. That's a big daf, as they call it, back in Israel, which I just saw a daf here somewhere. It's a big round frame drum. This first Kaddish prayer was recorded at the Kotel at the Wall in Jerusalem, and it goes like this. Tiberia at the cover of a Rambam on his yard site. And the high pitched singers you're going to hear in a second are from India, right here. Persian 
Ethiopia and Amuka, the place in, uh, right next to the holy city of Spot. <laughs> synagogue called Abu Hab in a Sephardim. <laughs> voices you hear in the background are the Yemenites from Ashkelon. And there was a little kid sitting right next to me who said, I'm man. This little tiny voice, you're going to hear it at the very end of the section. It's really sweet. There it is. sound album and the last album uh, that I just did was with uh, Sh uh, Shlomi Levy it's a uh, it's an amazing uh, really beautiful Yemenite album she's got a great voice and uh, we just did a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, concerts mostly on the East Coast and I literally ran out of CDs um, but if you uh, let's see if you give us your ah, there's an email thing there okay so if you're interested I'll even start playing some of the music while everyone's kind of hanging out and eating and stuff you can hear it and if you like it, you can put your email address on there. And uh, what we'll do is send you a link where you can just buy it online. And uh, you can get like download cards or physical CDs, whatever you like, buy them by the track, all kinds of different combinations. So we'll finish up with this one though. Why can't it be now? Why can't it be today? Why can't it be now? Why can't it be today? Everybody know this? Why can't it be now? Why can't it be today? You got it? Salam, right? Next one, Kozen Rufu. 
Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Okay, so I thought that would take a little more time, but all right. And the last one, every Israeli knows, Shanti. Yeah, when you're done with the army service, where do you go? You leave Jerusalem and you go to the holy place of India, where they say Shanti, right? Okay, so we got Shalom. Shalom. Salam. 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 Rufu. Rufu. And I say Om Shanti. Om Shanti. For no spiritual reason, I just needed another syllable, so that's Om Shanti. So here we go. Shalom. Salam. Rufu. Om Shanti. Okay, just you, just you. Thank you very much. Shavuot to everybody. Thanks so much for coming, Paul. Thanks so much for playing with me. It was great. It was really great. Mark, thank you very much. And Rina, wherever you are. Rina, thanks so much for your hospitality and Johnny too. I don't see you, but you're somewhere nearby. Thank you to Da Raba. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I haven't played this so long. Okay. The merciful one. I hopefully I remember right. The merciful one. Um, this is in three. Moments. It starts off with a kind of a chant. Goes like this. <clears throat> Yeah, 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 yeah
Shlomit and Rebbe Sol, the album is called The Seal of Solomon. Wow. And uh, I'll, put, I'll put a little bit of it on so you can hear it. Beautiful. And thanks so much for, yeah. for coming, really. If you haven't registered already or get some donation, mm. the Red Box is here. Uh, post register. Post register. Right. Pre register uh, and post register. Oh, okay, I learned something. Yes, uh, Rebbe Sol is living tomorrow to Israel and oh. can use any support from our fans. The Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks so much.